So this is one piece of test gear I picked up recently locally. I saw it there, thought well, this looks like an interesting thing. I don't have one of these yet or something that can do this particular job. So I got it. And it is a reasonable price, which is you know another main motivating factor. So it's a Lavelle AC microvolt meter, the TM3B. Now I do actually have a version of a circuit diagram and for this thing it's for the three series. Hopefully it's basically the same. So it's got like a B and C input just here. And it's got an output as well. It's got various controls. It's got a battery state and off. So there's a battery level, there's off position. So when it actually arrived, it was left over here. So it was actually left turned on. So obviously by someone that didn't actually know what it was or how it worked or playing the knob, but it's flat. All right, there's a little bit of voltage here. The needle moves slightly, but it's flat. And it's got a bandwidth up to three megahertz as well. And so it's got sensitivities right down to 15 microvolts full scale, which is pretty impressive. It's got calibration seals on it, which is interesting. Front and rear. So it's actually sealed by VT Fitzroy, whoever they are. It's got batteries in it, so we need to pull this thing apart and actually have a look. Look at the battery situation and find out what's going on there. And it looks like the calibration date for this thing was 2009 to 2012. And it's got the same seals on it, which means this thing's probably got the same battery in it from 2009, which is 14 years ago. So all I'm going to do, I think, is take the back panel off, because that looks like the way to go. Notice it's got an odd screw over here. Self-tapping as well. I know a lot of these bits of gear I picked up recently have got Babcop stickers on them. Most of it's probably ex-navy or ex-military stuff, I'm guessing. Anyway, so that's got like a rubber seal on it. This one's got a metal washer. And this is a different screw. <laughs> Every single one's different. That's quite interesting. Anyway, does that pop off? Ooh, battery carnage. <laughs> oh yes, yes, that's that's seen better days. Yuck. So I think we can say this battery holder is. Um, Done. <laughs> so it takes six cells, six 1.5, so it's nine volts powered, and it's got a nine volt battery clip on it. So maybe let's put a nine volt battery on, maybe it's just enough to run it with a nine volt battery without the whole AA cell thing. So you notice this battery holder is rattling around inside the case, right? Anyway, right here is a polystyrene cup. Um, I guess that's how they try to stop it rattling. Is it to catch the leaky acid that comes out? Anyway, I've got some capacitors to check. Not many, but there's some. And they're all Philips ones, for the looks of it, so they're probably all bad. So I just sprayed inside the battery compartment here and on this back panel with some white vinegar to try and neutralize the acid that's floating around inside there. And I'll give it a wipe out afterwards. All right, let's check these capacitors out just very quickly with this and see what we get and see how they appear to be. So this one here, I don't know, 200 microfarad it says. 260 at 2.1 ohms. Yeah, slightly up. This is supposed to be 470. Oh, we're getting 767 at 1.3 ohms. Again, a bit up. Can't see what this one is yet. 836.3 ohms, which isn't as good. Um, I think that's another 470. Another 470 over here. That's 500.56. So the resistances aren't looking too bad. This is slightly off in some of them so far. It's like 100 microfarad. 114.49 ohms. That looks fine. This one here. It's like 220 microfarad. 792 at 0.24 ohms. It could be in parallel with some other stuff. Let's check this one here. 188.47. There's one here. Can't see what it is. 330 at 0.6. And one here. If I can get onto it. 150 at 0.94. So they're all looking reasonable, really. I'm surprised. 0.25 ohms and 3350. And it's a 2000. 
again up a bit plus or minus 50 percent yeah okay that's a bit on high side so they're all really a bit high which is a sign of them being a little bit old obviously the businesses look okay apart from a couple of them so i think it probably really does need recapping but i think initially we'll just try powering it up and we'll see what happens i'll plug a 9 volt battery into this and we'll go from there all right 9 volt battery let's see if it actually turns on let's see if the battery indicator even shows up it does and it actually goes into the range where it looks like it's okay well, that's a good start maybe i can run off that battery maybe so voltages so it's got 500 volts as a maximum scale yeah okay let's settle down even just being near the input is triggering something or maybe not a little bouncing around that's interesting It could be capacitors reforming because I get the feeling this hasn't been used for a decade. I think I must take a load on this thing so it happens. Okay, 50 ohm load fitted. Doesn't look too different. Behaving the same way the 50 ohm load. Okay. So this is a mean sensing calibrated RMS meter as it's mentioned this down here. So it means it's an average reading but calibrated to give RMS. So if you have a non sinusoidal waveform you won't get an accurate reading. But that's fine. As long as you know that. Millivolts. So I should actually hook this up to something soon once I've gone through each scale just to see how they're actually functioning. Hook it up to something and generate a signal and see how it actually works. Got a nice mirroring on the background there, so it bounces around and settles on every range. Snare into the microvolt ranges, and surprisingly, they're actually doing slightly better. Yeah, it's starting to hover a bit high there. And the 15. So that's the most sensitive range. I'll take this off. Yeah. Well, oh, it's working. How's the battery reading now? Now I've done that. Still looks alright. So it looks like you probably can run it off a standard 9 volt battery. So, what I'm actually tempted to do with this thing is to actually refit the back panel and have this wire coming out the back somehow and having the battery holder mounted on the rear. I'm not sure that really matters for shielding though, I don't know, it may be a problem, but it may be fine, because I think having a battery holder on the back with a battery external is going to be a lot more convenient. Obviously this is built around having a massive battery pack in it which would last for a long time. Well, if I'm going to be using these then yeah, not so much. So I pulled the unit out and rechecked the capacitors again like this. I checked a few times and actually they're all testing okay. These two here, which I tested on this round, measured bad, but then I measured them again, and they were right. So I think it's purely a bit of oxidization on the leads and it's causing some contact problems with the actual measurements. But and I'll try a few times, I end up getting decent results from them, so I'm thinking they actually they're right. I think the worst one is this one, it's about 0.9 ohms of ESR, so yeah, they actually seem fine. So I'm actually gonna leave those alone. I think it probably will need recalibrating. Maybe I'll spray a bit of deoxy on these and give them a bit of a twiddle. Probably a bit of oxidization causing problems on these, it's quite possible. Yeah, I think that'll probably be right. Let's give it a bit of a calibration and go from there. But I think it basically works really. I need to sort out some kind of battery situation. So I'll just set up over here on my calibrator. I was just going to do the calibration on this thing, actually do some adjustment and actually get it calibrated and sign up, you know, get it all set up nicely. So I know it's definitely good. And it was sealed from previous calibration, so it could still be fine anyway. And I did that basic testing over there with my junk tech signal generator, which isn't going to be wonderful output. It's going to be close, but it's not going to be perfect. So injecting 10 millivolts at 1 kilohertz, which you can't see because it's behind this unit, and I'm getting almost exactly 10 millivolts on there. Being on the angle you're at there, you can kind of, if you get the middle of the scale just right and everything, it basically is 
bang on 10 millivolts over here. So that's good. Happy with that. Now this is the, like the first step of the calibration process. You inject 15 millivolts to get full scale and it should get a 20 dB gain from this output jack, right? So 20 dB is 10 times basically, right? Here we are getting 100 millivolts coming out without even touching anything really close. So let's actually put this up to 15 millivolts. So it should be full scale and it is. And you get 150.2. So it is very slightly out here. So I'm actually thinking I might just give that gain a very slight tweak. But I'm going to go through the calibration process, which isn't very big. There it is here, single page. These are the adjustments for it. In case you ever need to reference those, maybe, I don't know. And here's a quick look at the circuit diagram, in case you need that too. Hope it's in shot. Okay, I don't know, maybe. There's a circuit diagram. You can find a manual online. But uh, I'm just going to go through the process and just make sure it looks okay. I might just do a verification and just tweak that gain slightly and go through the rest of the settings and make sure they look alright. I may not need to change anything. That'd be good. Now the actual gain control on the back here is very sensitive because it is a standard pot, alright? As you can see, that's that red one just there. And as I don't have the back on this right now, it's also picking up noise. Put my hand near it and see the actual output increases. See that? Bring it away again, it drops back down. So I might actually put that rear cover on and just check that again. I've actually given it a bit of a tweak, did it closer already. So the rear cover's in place and you can see what I'm getting there. I can't really get any better than that, I think that's going to be it. The slightest little touch on that pot will throw it out by 100. So I think I'm going to leave it there, I think that's pretty good there. So next thing to adjust is DC bias, so I've now got it set on to DC. It's supposed to be plus or minus 50 millivolts DC across the upper sockets. And I'm getting 21, so I'm actually in spec, but I'm going to see if I'm getting any better than that. Yes. Very slightly dirty. Yeah, it's dirty, jumping around a little bit, so let's give it a clean. So I'll spray some deoxid on it. And this is jumping around a little bit. It does have like a weighted or buffered output, so it drifts around a little bit. As you turn it, it takes a while to actually react. So if you're trying to do this yourself, you have to be a bit more patient with it. Give it a chance to actually change. So I'll sort of try and get it as close as you as I can. I mean, I'm in spec now, all right? And there we go. Let's we'll see what this settles down to. Bring it back down slightly. So I'll do it a tweak, I'll just close the back cover. And it's drifting upwards very slightly there. But it's still well within what it requires, which is that plus or minus 50 millivolts. I'll see what it settles down to, but it's just like it's pretty settled there, really. It's not changing by that much. Here's a cat. Yeah, so it does seem to settle down to that sort of four or five millivolt range, so I'm happy with that. It's well within spec. So I'm just checking the 150 millivolt range over here, and that's bang on. 50 was very slightly high, just like a needle width above the 50 over here. I did check that one already. I'm just looking at these because it's got a particular gain setting, 40 dB preset control, which adjusts these particular ranges. So let's try 500 millivolts. That's like a needle width below. Oh, it's getting closer actually, it's just settling. Yeah, it's about a needle width below, it's not bad. And let's try the 1.5 volt range, which is an easy one to do. It's got to hit one button. So 1.5 volts. And that's a needle width down as well. It's very close. I might give that a bit of a tweak. 5 volt range. Yep, next one up. Alright, so that's 5 volts going in on a 5 volt range. And we're basically bang on. That's also looking really good. So it's at a 15 volt range. 15 volts, basically bang on again. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. So I should point out, actually, this is helpful because I just unplugged it. And I said before, it's 20 dB, like 10 times gain. Well, in that particular range, it was 10 times gain. What it is, it's a 20 dB or 150 millivolt output 
which is relative to full scale. So obviously you've got a percentage of full scale, you only get a percentage of the output power. So it might only be, you know, if you're getting half scale, for example, then you only be getting half that voltage. All right, so now on the 100 volt range on the calibrator, 50 volts over here, and we are indeed doing 10 volts here and here. It's matching. So it wants 50 volts, which is going to be full scale. 40 is basically bang on, slightly low, I think. And 50 is like a needle width low. That's looking all right. Next range up is 150. So we're doing 50, and we're basically on it. Now you're getting 100. And 150 should be full scale, and it's a needle width down. So again, I, I think I do need to give this a very slight tweak on a couple of these ranges, but it's really close to being right. Next range is 500 volts. So then 150 in. So 500 is over here, so it should be over there, and it is. So that's uh, 200, good, 300. It's needle width down, a couple of needle widths down. 400, about needle width down. Well, it's settling down to be closer. 500 is right there. So looking good. I need to do some lower ranges. So now I'm outputting one millivolt, and we are indeed getting one millivolt on the scale there. It's doing 500 microvolts. It's got a one half millivolt scale there, and we are indeed on it. It's got a 1.5 micro, uh, millivolts, so it should be right there. Yes, we are. Great. Now this is towards the limits of what this calibrator can do. I might have to do some kind of voltage divider unless I want to go and lower than this. We'll see. Anyway, we're doing 500 now, so should we get to 500? We're reading a little bit high on that one. 200. Again, reading slightly high. 100. They're definitely reading a bit high there. Do 150 there, see what we're getting. Should have done about 100, and we're reading a bit above that. The only way real way I need to know is to actually divide down a high voltage accurately and see what we're getting out of it. That's probably the only real way to do that. But even look, me just touching the casing is making an effect on the readings. So yeah, I'm not using an ideal setup for this particular measurement. I mean these cables are probably picking up noise. Yeah, touching the cable changes it. So it could actually be dragged up by noise nearby. So if I maybe unplug this cable here, get it away from it. Turn the multimeter off. It dropped very slightly then. So yeah, it's probably just environmental noise which is causing this to be pushed up slightly. Probably fine. So I've put in a couple of attenuators here. I've got a 10 dB and a 30 dB, which should be 40 dB of attenuation. In theory, I'm injecting 100 millivolts right now, which means I should actually be about there on the scale. Right there. I'm reading quite high above that, so this isn't actually quite right. It is reading high with this attenuation, which isn't great. But it will mean I can get down to these lower ranges and at least confirm it works. So if we know we're reading three high on that scale there, as long as we get the same at the other ranges, we should be okay. So let's drop this down by a factor of 10, and drop this down by a factor of 10. We should be in about the same place, and we are. That's verified. Again, down by a factor of 10. And down by a factor of 10, that's the lowest range. And yet we're really close to the same place. And me being here touching this now is actually less of an effect than it was before. So I guess these attenuators are actually helping to isolate a little bit or something. So yes, that's actually confirmed. It works right down to 15 microvolts. Brilliant. So basically all these measurements are ones I can check and verify have been close enough for me to not worry about changing anything. I think the calibration this is absolutely fine. If I change it again, I might actually be making it worse based on the touchiness of some of these pots and stuff. So I'm going to leave them where they are. I mean, a couple of needle widths really doesn't matter that much. It's close enough. Happy. I think that's fine. Check out the other videos down below for things to watch. There's a subscribe link right there. There's a Patreon support link over there, which helps me to buy things like this to do videos about. Catch you later.